Williston Keybird Baseball is on the air. Welcome to live coverage of Williston Keybird Baseball action. For the pregame show and coaches' comments, let's catch up with John Heisey at the ballpark. And there is your Thank you very much, Scotty Hogan, and welcome to the Montreal Williams REC pregame show as we uh, come to you from the press box just above the uh, dealer park field here in uh, Billings, Montana. Normally, we're up about two or three levels. Uh, this one, uh, about yeah, maybe 10 feet, maybe 12 feet. The uh, Keybirds will play uh, this afternoon, or this evening, I should say, uh, they'll play the Royals from here in Billings. Hi, it's the uh, Dagger with you, and I'll be joined shortly by Rob Wad as we bring you this evening's game. We should see a very exciting game as these two teams will meet for the uh, first time in what will be a three-game round robin play before the uh, playoffs start uh, tomorrow afternoon. Uh, Coach Sean Eggie and the boys look to uh, get back on the winning track after uh, their last loss, an 8-7 to seven to loss down in Omaha, and they want to get things going with a win here this evening. The Keepers are ready to go, and so are we. We will take a three-minute break, and when we come back, I'll have a conversation with our color analyst, Rob Wad, for today's game. You're listening to the Montreal Williams REC pregame show and Keybird Baseball. Egos, Williston. All right, welcome back to uh, Dealer Park here, and this is actually Dealer Montana. Is that is that right? Is it a, a city named Dealer? Not that I'm aware of. No. no okay, uh, I thought I heard no, somebody I, say it earlier. This is just uh, part of Billings. I believe correct. the gentleman is uh, is a local businessman. Is he? Okay, great. And uh, the voice you hear is the voice of Rob Watt. And uh, Rob, glad to have you alongside. I mean, it's it's fantastic to have you alongside. <laughs> I uh, as as we were talking about earlier, John. Uh, um, my whole family and I are just amazed by this and the interest that it's generated. I know Dad would be extremely honored, and uh, uh, and we are too. Yep. Uh, it's a uh, tribute to uh, Rob's dad, and uh, very apropos that it happens to come the week after Father's Day, and uh, you lost your dad in 1987, I believe. That's correct. Yep. And uh, he worked in uh, morning radio in Rhinelander, Wisconsin, for 35 years. And uh, anybody that was a, a part of Rhinelander, northern Wisconsin at that time, definitely knew who your dad was. To me, uh, he was a mentor. And uh, also, and somebody who couldn't be a part of this, uh, Mike Keel was also a mentor, too. And uh, unfortunately, Mike is really, really sick and oh. wasn't able to be a part of this. And what we'd like to do is ask for prayer for both Mike and his family, uh, asking for uh, full recovery and uh, that he'll get his health completely back. So prayers to you, Mike, if you're listening, or uh, Mike's wife or family members. Uh, Rob, uh, you know, we're doing this broadcast as a, a, a tribute to your dad and everything that uh, he's done uh, in the community. I mean, he not only was on radio, but, you know, he, there were a lot of organizations that he worked with and, and helped out as well. Uh, tell us a little bit about some of those uh, organizations that you remember. Well, I, I think, first of all, um, he was um, a very big supporter of emergency services, the fire, fire department, police department, sheriff's department, friends with all of them uh, as well as the hospitals um, but the you know the organizations he worked with he was very big uh, with the March of Dimes um, my understanding is that originally the March of Dimes telethon was held actually where people came to the radio station yep. and then at some point when they decided to incorporate closed circuit TV it moved down to the uh, Memorial Building uh, in Rhinelander and uh, but he worked with um, with um, uh, you know, the March of Dimes, um, uh, government agencies, the post office. He's got a yeah. commendation <laughs> from the post office of all things. Um, um, mostly, you know, with with small local groups, but no. Uh, and I think the thing about Dad was, when it came to charity, no event, no need was too big or too small. Um, Dad supported the uh, Jerry uh, Jerry Lewis Telethon. Right. Um, and, you know, we used to have, uh, or the kids used to have carnivals 
um, and Dad would always make sure that those were promoted on the radio. Um, you know, they, um, uh, he was huge in terms of, like, uh, scholarship programs. Of course, you remember, I'm sure, um, uh, Stunt Night. Dad was very yes. active there. Um, Jumps in the night. Yep. Uh, he was. He was like I said. No, nothing was too big or too small for him. Uh, if there was an individual need, Dad really looked to help out, um, and just just very very giving of his time. Yep. And and one of the things he did for me as a mentor uh, was you know he took a tape of, of one of my shows and listened to it and then gave me suggestions. It wasn't, you know, you got to do this, you got to do Like some people would be threatening and stuff like that. No, your dad was just nice, easy, relaxed. <laughs> you know, really, you might want to think about this or that. You know, try this, try that, and stuff like that. And it was it was great. Really, really like that. Uh, of course, he had the JW-isms, which uh, we'll hear more about <laughs> as uh, we go along yeah. here. Uh, as we uh, go along, I also want to thank uh, Scotty Haugen and Mike Smith, uh, along with Jaden uh, at the studios of 660 Keys News Radio for uh, all their help. And then also a big thank you to Duff Damos back in Rhinelander from WOBT 1240 Radio for helping us put this uh, tribute together. Uh, we'll take it back to the station for a break. And when we come back, uh, we'll talk more. You're listening to Keybird Baseball. Hi, Rob. This is John Clyde Estabrook, a voice from the past. John Clyde, as I was known, on WOBT, WRHN, FM, Rhinelander. Hey, I am so proud to have the opportunity to pay a tribute to John Wad. John Wad was a true broadcast professional. He loved his job. And he was a great mentor to me and a lot of other people that passed through the halls of that great station. I can recall John recording my show unexpectedly and then dropping the recording in my mailbox and leaving a note congratulating me on my good work and maybe offering a suggestion here or there as to a better pronunciation of a word or something that would improve the broadcast. I also recall one time when John was ill with the flu so much dedication that he insisted on doing his show from his bed and i ran the board at the station and john using the remote equipment did his show lying in his bed again a real true professional congratulations john wad what a career so proud to have been a part of it John Clyde Estabrook, thank you very much for that uh, tribute piece. And <laughs> what, what can you say, Rob? Uh, uh, not much, really. I'm kind of speechless. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, uh, your dad meant so much to so many people. And one of the, one of the things I wanted to ask you about was uh, one of the things that your dad did was for the seniors every year, he would have them come out at 6 o'clock in the morning when he want, went on the air, and he'd have them on there for that very first half hour. Did you get a chance to do that? Yeah, I did, uh, and Dad pretty much completely ignored me. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's funny, and I was thinking about that before I came to the ballpark uh, this afternoon. I, don't, I wonder if there are any people that grew up in the Rhinelander school system that did not at one point, whether it be in grade school or at, in high school, uh, make a trip to WOBT and visit with Dad. I would have to say that most kids at some point got a chance yep. to talk to him and see the station. So, But, yeah, he, I, I went out there. You know, I was up all night with everybody else, and we went and honked the horns and then went out to see Dad at the radio station. And as far as I could tell, he didn't even know he had a son named Rob. <laughs> <laughs> How many people were uh, in the studio at that time when you were doing that? There must have been quite a few. Yeah, you know, I don't remember exactly, but I'd say there had to be... 50 or more you know there was a there were a lot of people there that's that's what you did you stayed up all night part you know um, you know painted your car yes i was gonna say partying but no no we never did that um you know, painted your car and then you went around and woke everybody up and then you went to the radio station and uh that was just what you did, and I don't know how many years that went on, but but many many years. I'm, I was thinking there probably had to be over well over a thousand uh, students who've graduated that have been out to the station for oh, that at that time. I would think so. I think that's a that's a pretty good estimate. Yep. Yeah. And and the thing was is he'd always find the right people to talk to and and stuff, and it was just, I mean, I got to hear it. 
because I overslept. That day. <laughs> I wake up, my radio was was set to WOBT. It went on, and all of a sudden, hey, all the graduates are here. It's like, oh no, they're not because I'm not still sitting at home. Not all of them. Huh? <laughs> but oh uh, yeah, that was it was great to to do that. Now your your dad also uh, worked with Ray Walters for yes. many many years. You yes. got any story of of him and Ray together? You, you know. Um, they worked separate shifts, so uh, on on air. Yep. So typically, we wouldn't see their interactions. You know, I know that Dad thought the world of Ray. Um, he really did. Um, they were, uh, uh, you know, good friends. Um, and I remember listening to Ray in the afternoons before I went to school, of course. Uh, so I was pretty young, but but yeah, they were. Uh, Dad had a lot of respect for Ray, and uh, and they were generally good friends. There was a, a show that they had on. It would be eleven oh five. Monday through Friday, mm-hmm. called Help Your Neighbor. Oh, yes. No, yes. was that? I was trying to remember if that was your dad's show or if that was Ray's show. Um, I think dad did the, the bulk of it, although I couldn't say later on, you know, how much yep. they might have interchanged. But, yeah, <laughs> Help Your Neighbor. Yes, there's there's some stories about Help Your Neighbor. <laughs> you, got, you got one that you uh, can tell? <laughs> well, you know, I, I yeah, I think somebody was wanted to sell their drawers or something like that, dress, set of dresser drawers. And I think that came out bad <laughs> on, the, on, the, on the show. So Yeah, he, uh, he it, it's, uh, you know, Besides doing the the, ra- the radio show, I mean, him and Todd McElhoney worked oh. together, and I mean, what a pair! When you know, if you get a chance to ever hear any of the old tapes, and and, and they are out there, uh, Todd and your dad together were the consummate professionals. I mean, you you forget how good, you know, that type of radio was. It and and they were they were they were consummate professionals. I think. Uh, the fact that they were such fast friends. They were really uh, good friends, and I think that, that, of course, that made it enjoyable to work together, and I think that shows. Um, you know, you mentioned that there are some tapes out there. Um, it's sad. I think I have about 12 minutes of a Hodeg basketball game and somewhere about 15 to 18 minutes of a Hodeg football game, a bell game, by yep. the way, in Antigo. And uh, um, it's just sad that we don't have more because they yep. really were spectacular together. Mac, you know, Mr. McEldowney, the Macker, of course, was one of the great, in, in, my, in my lifetime, one of the really great play-by-play announcers I've ever heard. And Dad complimented him so well. They worked so well together. Yeah. One of the things I looked at with uh, Todd McElhone, it, Todd was an outstanding baseball player. And uh, I, I go back to the Field of Dreams, and uh, what was the, the guy's name? Doc. Uh, I can't think of what his name was. Anyhow, you know, in there they said, you know, had you end up playing baseball, you wouldn't have been able to help or touch the oh, lives right. of all these people. Right. And with Todd, I felt the same way. He hurt his arm. He wasn't able to continue in baseball. But he became a teacher, yep. and he touched the lives of so many people. Yep. It's yep. just unbelievable. Did you have him as a teacher? I did. Uh, I did. And he was just, uh, you know, he was just beloved. He really was. I, I, you know, I've never run across a person that had him as a teacher yet that has had said anything but absolutely superlative things about him. He just yep. was a great teacher um, because he was a really great man he was a really genuinely caring guy and uh, he had a great sense of humor yes, he, did. he had an awesome sense of humor he and dad just you know they used to love to i think just to entertain each other yep so <laughs> and they did a pretty good job of it your uh dad had a, a lot of things that uh he was able to uh do and uh, as we said talk talking about some of the other things that uh he was able to do as far as working with the uh other programs and stuff. Did he ever mention what he liked best about doing his morning show? You know, I don't. I don't recall Dad ever saying anything about it. Um, what I know is Dad was, um, and a lot of people probably don't don't know this, but Dad was a classically trained actor. He went to Lawrence University, graduated from Lawrence University, majored in drama, and I think um, that that the radio gave him the opportunity to use the talent that he had and he was a tremendous actor and all you have to do is listen to his radio yes. show and you know that <laughs> um and i think that but i i think the heart of what dad did always was for people he, um dad genuinely loved people and he particularly loved the people of the northwoods um 
You know, we were talking a little earlier, you and I together, about the fact that Dad was awarded a local legends yep. uh, of radio, or lo- legends of local radio award by the uh, Wisconsin Broadcasters Association two years ago, and that really ties him to the North Woods because that is really what mattered to him. Yep. The people of the North Woods, and I think if he felt he could make bring somebody's you know, bring somebody something good in life, and if you could help people out, that's really what he did. The um, morning show was a vehicle to help yep. do that. Out of all the JW isms, <laughs> what what was your favorite? March around the breakfast table, <laughs> and I don't have I don't have it on tape, and it's just killing me. Um, you know, happy honker. I've got one happy honker out there, um, but uh, march around the breakfast table. I think was mine. I think it was a lot of a, a lot of other people's too. Yep. Um, a little partial to um, the bright eyed one, who was yep. my mom. Yep. Uh, but yeah, my favorite have to be <laughs> march around the breakfast table. I, I think mine was. Burnt toast and coffee time, <laughs> because you could you could say he always painted a, a picture yes. that, that you could really really see. Uh, running a little bit late here for uh, game time. The uh, previous game ran uh, a little bit long. It ended up being a uh, six inning affair, and I think the team that won, uh, which was the team from, let's see if I have it here. Uh, Oh, from Idaho Falls, uh, they think they scored 18 runs, <laughs> so, and most of those in the last inning. So what we'll do is uh, we'll take it back to the station for a two-minute break, and then uh, when we come back, I think we should be just about ready to get started with the game. The uh, Keybirds and uh, the Royals from uh, Billings, Montana, in the uh, Billings tournament here. It's the uh, Goldsmith uh, tournament, and we will have that Coming up for you in just a couple of minutes. Two-minute break. You're listening to Keybird Baseball. We're back at Dealer Park here in Billings, Montana. A uh, cloudy evening. Uh, We had some light rain showers earlier. Uh, I think we're going to be able to get past that for the game, which will be great because uh, wet grounds are not not always real fun. Uh, Time now to take a look at uh, our starting lineups brought to you by American State Bank. Uh, First of all, for the Royals of Billings, uh, leading off, it'll be the shortstop, Jaden Jordahl. At left field, it'll be Chase Hinckley. In center field, Nick Elligan. The cleanup batter will be number four, the third baseman, Aiden Martz. Batting in the number five spot, it'll be the first baseman, Colton Chavez. Batting sixth, it'll be number 14, the second baseman, Burke Steep. Batting number seven, it'll be number three, the catcher, Michael Olin. In the number eight spot, it'll be Peyton Stidham. He'll be playing right field. The DH will bat number nine, Bubba Bergen. He's number 10. The pitcher will be number eight, and that will be Cal Mass. Taking a look at the uh, starting lineups here for the Keybirds at center field, it'll be Chris Sathy. In left, it'll be Carter Bakken. The pitcher will be Garrett Hill. Batting cleanup, it'll be the catcher, Jackson Meyer. Batting number five, it'll be the third baseman, Camden Miller batting sixth and playing first base Jake Ingen batting number seven it'll be the right fielder Dale Jorstead batting number eight it'll be the shortstop Reed Hansen and batting number nine and playing second base it'll be Kyle Mischke of course Sean Eggie head coach of the Keybirds and for the Royals it'll be coach Swecker just about ready to get underway here the dagger, along with Rob Watt, a pair of hodags doing a keybirds game. <laughs> Left-handed batting, Chris Sathy getting ready to step in. The keybirds in their fluorescent orange tops, white pants, black numerals. The pitcher comes in, and the ball hit towards second base. A slow roller, pitch turn, got no. They throw it away. Wow. That went right into the crowd, and uh, Safi will move on to second base. So a error to lead things off. That'll go as an E4 
I'm gonna I'm gonna do an E4. That could have been the first baseman's fault as well. That ball was uh, kind of high, but he should have been able to handle it. So Sathy is on at second base, and coming up will be the Carter Bakken will be the left fielder, and Carter looks at a pitch in there for a strike. No balls and one strike. Bakken right-handed batter, a runner in scoring position with Chris Sathy. Bakken steps out, now steps back in. He'll wait. Here comes the pitch from the lefty. And they show bunt down low, gets away. The catcher can't find it. And that's probably one of the worst places for a ball to go for a catcher is right underneath him. He <laughs> can't locate where it's at. So the uh, pitcher Moss, Cal Moss, the lefty waits. Here comes the 1-1 one, one pitch. It'll be 1-2. and two. Check that. Uh, we'll go. Two and one. Bach and Waits. Here comes the pitch from Moss. Ball nubbed into fair territory. Pitcher has it, throws over to first, and he gets him an elbow. I think Bach and might have got hurt there. I don't know if you saw that. It kind of went awkwardly. He hit the side of the bag. And coach, assistant coach, pitching coach. Trevor Sorensen talking to him to make sure he's okay. He's kind of limping as he goes into the dugout here. So that will goes a 1-3 out. And the pitch to Garrett Hill is in their first break. Garrett, one of the top batters in the state of North Dakota. He'll be going to North Dakota State University next fall. Here comes the pitch in there for a strike. And Garrett has him right where he wants him. And you might say, what, 0-2, that's where he wants him? The best two-strike batter in the state of North Dakota. Hill waits. Moss looks at first. Here comes the pitch. A slow curveball, number two, the pitcher. Looks at third, fires over, and they'll erase Garrett. So two outs here on one three putouts. Sathy is on at third base. And coming up will be Jackson Meyer. Meyer, the catcher for the Keybirds here in the game. And the Keybirds will play tomorrow afternoon. It'll be 3 o'clock Central Time, 2 o'clock our time. We'll have the pregame for you at 2.45. Here comes the pitch, and it's on the outside corner for a strike. No balls and one strike. Meyer, right-handed batter. Down in Omaha, had a complete game victory for the Keybirds. Here comes the pitch. Ball again nubbed out and I think we're going to have three outs, all one, three put outs. So the Keybirds don't get a hit in the inning. They get no runs on no hits. There was one error and one runner left on base. After one half inning of play, the Keybirds nothing and the Royals coming to bat. We'll take it back to the station and we will return with the Royals at the plate. You're listening to Keybird Baseball. We are back. The Royals batting here in the bottom of the first inning. Here comes the pitch. In there for a strike from Garrett Hill. The batter for the Royals is Jaden Jordal. No balls and one strike. There's a ball hit towards second base. Hi, this is Jay Anderley, student uh, announcer WOVT in 1968, 69, and 70. Had the very unique pleasure of being mentored and taught by John Wad uh, at WOVT Radio back then. His partner in crime, Ray Walters, they were icons in our community. Uh, many young people found careers in media and uh, went on to other great professional uh occupations because of the mentorship, the wonderful things that we all learned together, you know, working with John and Ray at WOBT Radio. And I can remember one of my funniest things was uh, back in 1969 when some of the more controversial music came out. Uh, one for sure was a song by Bob Dylan, Lay Lady Lay. We used to get them in as 45 promo copies, you know, because we queued everything up on the turntables and 
I played that one night, and there was a polite but yet uh, affirmative note that uh, that's not the uh, kind of music we play on WOBT radio. And I had uh, Led Zeppelin's uh, 45 sitting there that was new called A uh, Whole Lot of Love, and I knew right then and there that I wasn't going to be able to play that one either. So, But uh, that's the way things were back then. city of Rhinelander got up every morning, marched around the breakfast table listening to John and Ray. He was a fine man for the community, and again, a lot of talent was uh, produced through his mentorship. So uh, salute to John Wad. I'm a better man because I knew him. Hi, Rob. This is Barry Schillings. My relationship with your dad started in the fall of 1961 when I was picked to be the freshman spotter for the Hodeg football games. That started a 13-year on-air and off-air relationship with your dad. He always had time for me and was a consummate professional. My fondest memory was working with your dad when he was hosting the 1964 March of Dimes Telethon in the old memorial building on Stephen Street in Rhinelander where he unknowingly introduced me to my future wife, Chris Schillings. He said, kiddo, go ask that pretty girl to dance. I did, and Rob, I've been dancing with her for the last 56 years. Hi, Rob, this is Charlie Surfine. It's really hard to think of just one example or one story to tell about your dad, uh, J.W., and the influence that he had on my life. So I'm going to sort of do a generic cover it all. Um, He was such a a man of principle in everything that he did. And he taught me a a thousand valuable lessons. But the most important one that I remember is he said that every time you key your mic, remember that you don't know who's listening. And that creates a sacred trust. People who listen to the radio are listening for a specific purpose. Maybe it's entertainment, maybe it's information, doesn't matter. But your job is to make sure that every time you key the mic, every time you turn it on, every time you open your mouth, that what you say is authentic and honest. And I think that's a tribute to the wonderful man that he was. So, JW, I know you're up there in heaven looking down on all of us, and we appreciate the intercession that you give us on a daily basis. And Rob, uh, God bless you. Thanks for being the great guy that you are. Hi, Rob. This is John Clyde Estabrook, a voice from the past. John Clyde, as I was known on WOBT, WRHN, FM, Rhinelander. Hey, I am so proud to have the opportunity to pay a tribute to John Wad. John Wad was a true broadcast professional. He loved his job. And he was a great mentor to me and a lot of other people that passed through the halls of that great station. I can recall John recording my show unexpectedly and then dropping the recording in my mailbox and leaving a note congratulating me on my good work and maybe offering a suggestion here or there as to a better pronunciation of a word or something that would improve the broadcast. I also recall one time when John was ill with the flu so much dedication that he insisted on doing his show from his bed and i ran the board at the station and john using the remote equipment did his show lying in his bed again a real true professional congratulations john wad what a career so proud to have been a part of it hi rob it's kim lee peck Your dad was the morning voice of Rhinelander. Everyone listened because he was local and fun. He was one of them. He didn't talk at the listeners. He talked to them like a friend and a neighbor. I remember the happy honkers marching around the breakfast table and the job your dad did on all the remotes and sports broadcasts. WOBT was a launching pad for many outstanding broadcasters, many who are joining me on this tribute. Your dad was not only an on-air personality, he developed these young men and would get them involved in his show. It made them feel special. I thank you for letting me be part of this. It was an honor to listen and learn from John Wad, 1240 WOBT. Hi, Rob. This is Scott Mishnick, later known as Scott Lewis in broadcasting. I have to tell you, I had a fantastic 47-year career in broadcasting. Started at WOBT in Rhinelander 
during high school and ended up as an investigative reporter on TV in Detroit. And here's the truth. I owe it all to John Watt. I was about 15 years old. I was in an Optimus Club speaking contest. John was one of the judges. I won first place. He came up to me afterward, pulled me aside, and asked me if I was interested in working in radio. Of course, I jumped all over that one. It turned out to be an opportunity of a lifetime because the way it works in broadcasting is you advance with experience. So by the time I got to college in Stevens Point, I already had a couple years' experience. I got a job at WSPT Radio. Um, a few days after graduation, I got a job at WTMJ in Milwaukee. I think that was Market 25 at that time. In 75, I moved to WWJ in Detroit. That was the seventh largest market. Worked there for nine years in radio and 25 years in television. What a ride it's been. And I'm just telling you, John Watt was such a great guy. He was so good at what he did. A great teacher, great mentor. John, he really gave me the foundation for a fabulous, exciting career in broadcasting as he did for so many other young people from Rhinelander. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. Hi, Rob. This is Todd McEldowney. I have many fond memories of John Watt, my mentor and my father's broadcasting sports partner at WOBT Radio. John was an enunciation stickler. His comment to me after my first broadcast was, it's pronounced temperature, not temperature. Every morning, our town awakened to local news and sports as we all heard John say, along we go with the JW Show. We all marched around the breakfast table and were urged to drive slow, let our youngsters grow. There was no cable or FM competitors in the morning. John was a morning icon, known and loved by all of his radio fans. Congratulations to John's family for his induction to the Wisconsin Broadcasters Hall of Fame. It was very well deserved. 